Welcome back to another beautiful day in the land of music. My name is Douglas and today it's kind of a snowy day here in Maine and I figured it's a perfect opportunity to sit down and make a video on connecting the Novation Launch Key Mark III to the computer, getting it set up, talking about what comes with the launch key for software and plugins, and then walking you through how to get it connected to the computer and specifically how to get it connected within Pro Tools. I used this already, so I've already plugged this into my computer, I've gone through the process, and I wanted to share what I've learned with you, hopefully save you some trouble, and maybe you're not using Pro Tools, maybe you're not even using Windows as I am, but my hope is I can get you most of the way, and if you have questions, you're always welcome to throw those in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Sometimes different systems function a little differently. I feel like the M Audio Oxygen Pro maps up a little bit better to some of the controls within Pro Tools, but overall, it was very easy, and I'll show you how to do it, hopefully save you any sort of trouble along the way. So to get things kicked off, we've got to plug the USB cable in, and I've got it tangled up with my sustain pedal here. So I've got just the standard USB cable on the back. We plug that into the USB. There's also a five pin MIDI plug-in in the back of the controller. If you have maybe a USB audio interface, and you also have um, a five pin on there, you could plug through there, but you're not gonna get any DAW functionality. You're only gonna get the key control. So as we can see, as soon as we plug in the launch key, there's no on off button anywhere on the controller. It's USB powered. And you'll notice as soon as we plug it in, all the lights light up, it goes through its startup sequence and the controller is basically on. We could go ahead and plug a sustain pedal into the launch key as well. I've got just a regular Yamaha FC4A here. We could go ahead and plug that into the sustain pedal port. I'm gonna throw that down on the floor here. And for some reason, the controller is giving me all sorts of pretty colors. One thing to note here is that there's no drivers needed to use the launch key. Just uses the standard MIDI driver within Windows. And as soon as you plug it in, it's gonna open up a folder on your computer. Let's switch over to the computer here and I'll show you that. Now this is a folder that it opens up and if for some reason it doesn't, let me close this, you can go to your directory and over on the left hand side you should see launch key. In my case it mapped it to drive E. It may be something different for you. And this is where you're gonna get started. If you've never plugged this in before, if you have, you can just close this, bypass it. But if you've never plugged this in before, open up the click here to get started. And I'll kind of talk you through each one of these pieces, but it's gonna open up to the welcome portal. And you just click the let's get you started. And it says, welcome to your launch key. In my case, it's the 49. And what you're gonna to need to do is if you don't have a Novation or a Focusrite account already, you're gonna have to go and create one. In my case, I already have one. You could also skip registration if you don't wanna register. Just remember that in order to get the software and the virtual instruments that comes with it, you're gonna to have to register it. You're gonna to have to create an account to download those and get the activation codes. So if we skip the setup, it says, how can we help? And it kind of walks you through the steps to get started using the controller. So if you're new to making music, if you're a live user, or you're using a different piece of software. In my case, I use Pro Tools as my DAW. I don't use Ableton Live. And so I would click using a different piece of software and then click next. And what that's gonna do is it's going to ask you what piece of software you're using. And in my case, I'm gonna click Pro Tools. If you click next, brings you to a video on how to set it up specifically with Pro Tools. And you could also go to an in-depth tutorial. They've got written tutorials as well. They've got that for all the different types of DAWs, the popular DAWs out there. What Novation really advertises this controller for is Ableton Live. Everything maps up perfectly. I found it maps up pretty well to Pro Tools as well. I can't speak for the other DAWs, but hopefully it maps up for you. If you're using this with Pro Tools, you can go ahead and exit this webpage. I'm gonna show you how to get this set up and running with Pro Tools. Before we do that though, I wanted to just talk about the software and the virtual instruments that come with the Novation launch key. So included software is gonna be Ableton Live 10 Lite. You also get Serato Sample LE, which is a sampler plugin. You get two months membership to Splice Sound. You get Spitfire Audio Labs Expressive Strings. You get one license to one of the four XLN audio addictive keys. They have grand piano, upright, and a couple of electric pianos. You also get a reverb and a DAW cassette plugin. 
You also get access to AAS Session Bundle and Novation Sound Collective. So in my opinion, the most valuable piece that comes with this is the license to an XLN Audio Addictive Keys. I really like the Addictive Keys Grand Piano and the Upright Piano. I use both of those on a regular basis. So the fact that the license comes with it, you can go ahead and download one of those. I would recommend going with the Grand Piano if you don't have that already. Maybe you're not a piano player, you don't care. But if you are, that's a great plugin to start with for piano. So now that we've covered what comes with it, let's open up Pro Tools. And Pro Tools is gonna load, it's gonna scream at me because I don't have my audio interface plugged in and I don't have my M-Audio Oxygen Pro plugged in. And so both of those I had previously set up, Pro Tools remembers what you had set up prior. So it's gonna throw me a couple error messages. I'm gonna ignore those. We're gonna jump in, create a new session and talk about getting the launch key set up in Pro Tools. It's couple of really easy steps, so follow along. All right, so Pro Tools is open. Go ahead and create a new session. We're just gonna name this Novation Launch Key MK3. And now that that session's opened up, let's go ahead and just create a new instrument track. So track new, we're gonna do stereo, and we're gonna do instrument track. We're gonna call this piano. And I'm gonna put this in my samples, click create. So the instrument track allows you to put a virtual instrument on there. So in the insert, we're gonna go ahead and go to our instruments and we're gonna throw addictive keys. Since it comes with an addictive keys license, I'm gonna use that as my example here. We're just gonna grab the grand piano plugin. Let me close that. So if you've used Pro Tools at all, you know you need to arm the track in order for Pro Tools to start receiving MIDI messages. Click the arm button and we can play. And you see that we're getting signal through on our instrument track with the Addictive Keys plugin in it. If you're not getting signal for some reason, go up to your setup menu, go to MIDI, and then MIDI input devices and make sure that the two launch key items here in the list are checked off, which means they're enabled. If yours are not checked, that means it's not going to receive MIDI messages, so go ahead and enable those and click OK. We can also see that the pads trigger notes as well. So let's talk about DAW controls for a minute. If I hit play, stop, they don't do anything in Pro Tools. We've got to set this up in our peripherals menu. And if you've got Pro Tools first, Pro Tools first does not give you access to the peripherals, which means if you're using Pro Tools first, you won't be able to use the DAW controls. You will be able to use the MIDI note function of the launch key. You just won't be able to use the DAW controls. If you have the full version of Pro Tools, go to the Setup menu and Peripherals. And over on the MIDI Controllers tab, in this first slot here, you'll notice my Oxygen Pro is actually set up in there. So I'm gonna reset this back. And under Type, select HUI. Under the Receive From, go to Predefined and select the MIDI In To. And in the Send To, Predefined MIDI Out To. And then your channels, you only have a choice of eight channels there. And click OK. So now you'll notice that the board kind of reset for Pro Tools. It recognized that we selected that. And you can see now that, for instance, this row here, I've got one soft key that's blinking here. And I actually have my track armed. So if I tap this, that unarms my track. If I tap it again, it arms my track in Pro Tools. Really quick, really handy. I could switch between arming or selecting. So if I tap this, then I could select a track here. I don't have more than one track here, but if I did, then I could select through there. Go back here, arm, unarm with this row of buttons here. I could also mute and solo using these. So if I tap on this drum pad right here, that's going to mute track one. If I tap on the top row, it's gonna solo track one. And you'll notice if I have more tracks, so let me add another couple of tracks in here. And when I solo a track, you'll notice it automatically shows that my other tracks are muted. And I could also mute multiple by tapping more than one at a time, pretty slick. I could also use the transport controls here to play, stop, mark for record, and that's the whole session marking it for record, or changing whether the playback loops or not. All of those work. Undo works as well in these transport controls. Let me go over to the mix view, 
And you'll see when I move the first fader, it adjusts the volume of my first track, second track, third track. We can also adjust the pan of our track by using the knobs. So the first three knobs would adjust the pans of my first three tracks. Now, one thing to note here is that in Pro Tools, if it's a stereo track, you get a stereo pan. So you get two pan knobs. I haven't been able to figure out how to get the right pan knob to function. This will only function the left pan knob. So I need to play around with it a little bit more and see if there's a way with the Oxygen Pro, you would hit shift and that would jump over so you could control the second pan knob for the stereo channel. I haven't figured out how to do it with this yet. If you know, throw it in the comments below. I'm sure there's a way. But right away, you can see that all of the controls automatically mapped up to Pro Tools really well. A couple of things that are kind of clunky are changing banks. For instance, if you have more than eight tracks, it's not as simple as just hitting a bank forward back. You have to hit the three dots and then track forward or back and that slides you down the scale. I guess the one nice thing there is I was recording with this and I had 20 plus tracks in my session. When you do move, it moves your track view down to the next eight in your edit window. So it is one nice thing there, um, but it's a little bit difficult to keep track of which bank you're in because there's no indicator on the controller itself to tell you. I'm really happy with how painlessly this synced up to Pro Tools. All we did was set it up in the peripherals and everything worked. I can't speak for the other DAWs. Hopefully they map up for you. But if you've got questions, throw them in the comments below. I hope this was helpful for you. Be on the lookout for some additional videos on how to use the chord and scale mode, the arpeggiator, as well as comparison videos between the Mark II, the Mark III, and the Mark III and the Oxygen Pro. Really excited for those. Thanks for watching, stay inspired, and keep making that music. Thank you.